look at this hibernate architecture if you can see here uh, it's a very high level view and here we are having some application so that application is interacting with the hibernate right so if you can see this is your application and this application is interacting with hibernate framework okay but this framework is working on the top of the JDBC, right? And this JDBC will finally interact with your database and store data, right? Let us say this application is having some object which is a persistent object and some of the object is transient. So at this level, it will get filter. If I have a persistent object, that only will get inside this framework. Otherwise, one who is the transient, it will be there only. It will not come inside. Okay. So, we'll see what is a session factory, what is a transaction factory, and what is a connection provider, what is a session, transaction. These all are the uh, API in a hibernate. So, we'll see what it does. First, look at the session factory. It's a factory of session. Okay. A thread safe cache of compiled mapping for a single database. A factory for a session and a client of connection provider. So, this guy is having a factory for session. Okay. And it gets the connections provider. Now, session, it is again single threaded, sort live object representing a conversation between the application and the persistent store. So, what are the persistent store we are having? It will interact with the persistent store and application. Okay. Next, persistent object and collection. It is a sort live single thread object containing persistent store sorry persistent state and business functions uh, next is the transient and data as object and collection so these are the three uh, instance state we are having one is the persistent state second is a transient and third is the data okay so if it is a transient and data See, if it is persistent, it can go for interaction with the session and transactions. But if it is a transient, what is happening? Instance of persistent classes that are not currently associated with the session. So this guy will not interact or not attach with session. Right? It will not attach with session. So nothing is going to happen with this object. Right? Only persistent object will go and interact with the session right and finally transaction this api is again single threaded sort like object used by the application to specify atomic units of work so this transaction will do transactions with the database what is a connection provider a factory for we can say uh or a pool of JDBC connection as its name connections provider. So it is a connection provider, right? So it's a factory for JDBC connection. So we are having, let us say a lot of connections we are having and this guy will provide the connection. Abstracts applications from underlying data source or driver manager. Next is the transaction factory, a factory for transaction instances not exposed to the application but can be extended implemented by the developer okay so if someone wants to implement can implement and do some extension with that there are some other optional and extension interfaces which you can implement and customize the behavior of persistence layer okay so i hope you understood the this architecture of hibernate now now if you are having some application that application 
as I said, will interact with the hibernate and only persistent object will attach with the session, right? Now, this hibernate, what will have for that? We'll create a two file here. One is the hibernate properties. I mean, you should need a one configuration file and you should need a mapping file. Because how this database understand that what class, what object, what column table you are having, right? So for that sake, you need a mapping here. Okay. So we'll see how it works, how the mapping is done, how the configuration we create. I'll tell you that. So you can see clearly this application is intact with the Hibernate and we are providing a, some configuration that I want to connect with this database and some mapping we are providing here that and I want to say here that I have some mapping and in the mapping we describe what are the columns we are having for that column what are the property we are having what will the table name all these things be described and this configuration hold the configuration of the database that what kind of database server you are going to use okay how hibernate works so do not need to implement any magical interface it's not like that just implementing some interface and it will happen uh, do not need to change the way or your object we have so just you will keep using like you work with java normal create object and then call methods like that it creates a xml mapping document telling hibernate the classes okay so the magic is here only this guy will tell everything to hibernate what kind of table i want what kind of database i have and what kind of database server i want connectivity okay oh so look at this you are having a one java object let us say i have one class and that class is having some properties like id name and there's a some getter and setter method for that so set id set name get id and get name methods are there now i have one table sql table so that is having two column id and name now i want to store or i want to map this object okay to my table so how i will do this is what object table this is what one relation i mean a table so object relational mapping how it will happen so magic will happen here we will write some mapping and we'll write some configuration file. Okay. Look at this. So if you're having say customer class and customer class is having integer ID string name integer amount. So there's a three properties of the customer class. Same side. I have another uh, table in my database and table name is a customer table having three field id name and amount so whenever i am having some value with this object okay the record will get inserted another object another value record will get inserted fine how it happen will i will show you the magic part here Why Hibernate? Next, Hibernate is a scalable. You can use with uh, complex project. Hibernate is a free open source under the LGPL license. Runtime, performance monitoring, Eclipse support, less development. You are writing a less code. Automatic key generation. You are not worrying about whether my database is having sequence or identity or auto increment so hibernate will take care 
a ZDK 1.5 enhancement as we know that in ZDK 1.5 annotation has been added so we have the annotation based program and EZB3 style persistent operations so EZB3 provides a JPA for persistence so it's the same style we can use here also another Hibernate XML binding enables data to be represented as XML and POSO interchangeably. Okay, the EZB3 DOPT specification support for POSO persistent and annotations. So retains natural object model, minimizes code, does not require a container. As I say, it will also work with unmanaged environment and that we can say without container. Model is not tied to persistence implementation and enhance criteria query API. So there are some criteria query API. I'll show you what is that. I hope you are understanding all these concepts. So let us have a look on the instance states. Just now I told you there are three instance states we are having transient, persistent and deattach. Okay. So I can say an instance of persistent classes may be in one of the three different states which are defined with a respect to persistent context. The hibernate session object is the persistent context. Okay. So transient. So as I say transient will not uh, have a association with the session, right? The instance is not and has never been associated with an any persistent context. It has no persistent identity or primary key value, right? That is what transient. Persistence means it is associated with a persistent context. See, it has a persistent identity. Means there are some primary key value for that. And perhaps a corresponding row in the database. So there is some row recording that, okay? Next, the deattach. The instance was once associated with the persistent context, but that context was closed. Or the instance was serialized to another process. It has a persistent identity and perhaps a corresponding row in the database. So it is just saying that even after the initial, it was having the association, but that context has been closed now. So the instance was serialized to another process maybe. Okay. So these are the three instance states we are having. Okay. Let us compare the Hibernate with ZDBC. How we do with ZDBC now how we will work with Hibernate. So when we develop persistent logic for our application with JDBC technology, what we do first? We do connection. I mean, first we uh, take a connection, right? And we write connection con equal to drive manager dot get connection. Then we pass URL and then we pass username, password and all, right? And then we say con dot create a statement, con dot prepare statement, con dot prepare call, right? As per my statement. So we write some query and that query may not be optimized because we are not much into the RDBMS, right? So we cannot make a or we cannot write a tuned query here if we are not much in RDBMS. And then we say submit query to the database engine. If some result is coming, we process it and we display. And then we do the clean up the resources or handling exceptions and all. Sometimes we forget to do that, right? But all these things are not required in a Hibernate. Look at here. There's a normal JDBC coding, right? Writing class dot for name and loading the drivers, doing some connections, passing URL, username and password, right? And then firing the, I mean, creating a statement and then writing a query and then saying execute query 
and getting results right here. This all we do, but here we don't require. Look at here. This is your, let us say I have a class or a file person.java. I have a name.java. I am using this name here. Okay. This class is used here as an object. It's kind of composition. So we are writing one HBM file, hibernate mapping file. There we are describing what are the class we are having and what are the property we are having in this classes, right? In this classes. And then we are just mapping with the table. So automatically record will get inserted if we fire uh, or if we call some methods like there's a save method and all. I'll tell you what are that, how to do that. So this mapping tells everything to hibernate what to do. So if you're writing hibernate application, you have to bother about three things. First, configuration file. The configuration file may be in a separate XML file, may be in a dot properties file, maybe in your Java code itself. Okay. So you can write the whole configuration in the Java. You can write separate XML file. Okay. And then you need a POSO here, which will relate to your table, database table. So normal POSO and database table. And then you need a HBM XML file, hibernate mapping file. So these are only three things you need to do hibernate. Okay.